work hard at some speed, but my power can keep up just fine. Useless. Hey, wait, someone's there. Psionics. They'll fight even while the world's ending around them. Is the same. Hey, wait, someone's there. Psionics. They'll fight even while the world's ending around them. Who's that? I don't know, but it's 
psionic. It looks like we have to fight back. Use this well. Voice, are you Kasane Randall? Yuito Sumeragi? This old man? Wait, I know that sarcastic voice. Shiden Ritter? I see. You jumped from the time of the Suo incident to this time. Hmm. I think I understand what's going on. Although I can hardly believe it myself. Yuito Sumeragi. It seems that you're blind. I'm... Arashi Spring. I know your voice. All right. So will you join the group? No. I still have powers, but as you can see, I retired from the OSF. Huh. So we should be in Suo in the year 2020, but that's not the case, correct? I knew you'd have a handle on this, Arashi. This is Suo in 2070. That's impossible. You're saying we came to the future? An earthquake? The end has begun. What do you mean? How does this happen to Suo in 50 years? I want to explain it all, but there's no time. This planet will be destroyed soon. I, Yuito Sumeragi, led the world to destruction. What? What did you do? Major General Karin said something similar. So you met him. Regardless, it's all my fault. This world is about to disappear. It will be swallowed by the pseudo-black hole called the Kunad Gate that you and I created in the past. We created it? Was it those red strings? Yes. Kasana, your power isn't psychokinesis. It's just the gravikinesis, the power to create dimensions, behaved like psychokinesis. You have the power to travel through time. That's what those dreams of red strings were about. The red strings? So the phenomenon that appeared at Kunad brought us here? What? Everyone is gone! Ah, <sighs> so... The time has come. I heard the only people who can exist beyond time and space are those who have the ability to travel through it. The ones you bring with you will eventually return to their former time, like they did just now. How do you know all this? Who told you? Ara Habaki told me. 
That's why I was waiting for you to jump to the future. Let's talk somewhere else. There's no escaping danger here, but we can at least go somewhere a little safer. Let's go to OSF headquarters. I need to talk to Yuito now. I know you're confused. Honestly, I am too. I was waiting for you to come from the past, but I still only half believed you actually would. So what happened? Fifty years ago, after the Seiron Rebellion, Nuhimuka became desperate to protect the integrity of the nation. They used me, Yuito Sumeragi, the hero who saved us all to distract the citizens. I didn't resist. My brother Kaito begged me to. I thought it was the only way. My father was assassinated and I was told you were the culprit. You had disappeared. I didn't know what to believe. I killed the chairman? I don't understand. I can't say for sure, as I wasn't there. But all the evidence pointed to you. I thought the fact that you disappeared meant you were guilty. The truth is that you jumped into the future. I wouldn't kill your father. Let's get back on topic. At the time you disappeared 50 years ago, the fighting between Seiron and Suo was heating up. I spent my days taking down others and fighting psionics allied with Seiron. During all that, it began to expand. Kunod Gate. The pseudo-black hole that you and I made. Our powers are the same. The same type of gravikinesis. So, it seems that I have the time travel power, the red strings as well. Because we had the same abilities, our powers resonated and created a gravitational anomaly. Most of it was you. I wasn't strong enough to travel through time. But what made the Kunat Gate expand? That gate is only supposed to appear at the moment of time travel, and then disappear immediately. But when you used your time travel power, it didn't disappear because my power resonated with yours. Not only that, every time I used my power, the gate would warp and suck in the surrounding space. Is there no way to destroy it? Only if I die. If I die, the traces of my power maintaining the distortion will disappear. However, I didn't make that choice. I thought there must be some other way, and everyone persuaded me to look for one. No, that's not right. In the end, I couldn't kill myself. I was afraid to die. I struggled to find a way to live. And now the gate is so big, it won't go away even if I do die.
That's why this world is dying. Everything will be swallowed by the black hole. So please, kill me, Kasane. I want you to go 50 years into the past, before the Kunad Gate expands too large, and end the life of the false hero, Yuito Sumeragi. No, I could never. Naomi cares about you too much. Besides, how am I supposed to go back to the past? Red strings are triggered by swings in emotion. For example, when you are shaken by some type of emotional shock. But there's nothing to affect me right now. It's all right. I thought about that. All those years, all of it was for this moment. What is that? Other research has progressed in the last 50 years. We can now call them to us using sounds they like. We still can't make them go away, though. Others? I can't believe you do this! I'm sure I sound pretentious for assuming, but you're shocked now, aren't you? This isn't funny! Help me fight this other! I think I understand why you killed my father now. W what? Nuhimuka was researching how to change people into others. It was Nuhimuka that changed Naomi into another 50 years ago. <gasps> my father was the one directing that research. Even the hero Yuito Sumeragi knew that fact. And even knowing the cruelty of it, I eventually became chairman, and I continued the research. You continued it? Many people ended up like Naomi. I continued the research on powers, to find a way other than my own death that would close the gate. Yuito Sumeragi was just a mirage. A false hero who killed the world. So... <laughs> What are you doing? Why do you have that knife? Forgive me, Kasane. It's up to you now. I think this is real, but... is it? Kasane! There you are! Oh, I can't hear you, so don't bother replying. Arashi told me everything. Get out of there and head for the hideout. Kyoka and the others are already there. Hurry! Telepathic communication from Haruka. Then this is the present? I made it back. Copy that. I'm headed to the hideout. Welcome back, Kasane. I'm glad you made it back to our time safely. Arashi had my head spinning with worry with all her wild theories. Yeah, sorry. I didn't have much information to go on, so I assume the worst. Now we can hear what Kasane experienced rather than just my assumptions. Did anything happen after we got dragged back to the present? Yuito asked me to kill the Yuito in our time. 
What? What do you mean? Oh. So you're saying that the fact that the world is ending in 2070 is Yuito's fault? That pseudo-black hole that appeared at Kunod. It's not a black hole, strictly speaking. It's something similar that was created by Kasane and Yuito's powers. It's probably created as a means to actively move through time. It was created by a human brain, so it should have a systematic mechanism to its creation. Since it's not disappearing, it's negatively affecting the world. So, you agreed to it? No. I came back before we reached a conclusion. Hmm. Maybe that was future Yuito's plan. The time travel power, the red strings, are affected by Kasane's strong emotions. When something shocking occurs, her emotions must be stored as a kind of energy. Since Kasane is unable to control her time travel power, it activates immediately. I was worried there was a danger she could become lost in time and unable to return to the present. However, that doesn't seem to be the case. There must be some kind of guide when Kasane makes a time jump. She must be attracted to time periods she has already experienced or is familiar with. And Kasane sees that guide as red strings. So, future Yuito assumed that by increasing Kasane's emotional level, she would return to this time. I don't care about the logic of it. Are you gonna kill that damn kid? I don't know. It's not an easy decision to make. Right. I'm sorry for yelling. Calm down, everyone. So much has happened to Kasane. She has a lot on her plate. Let's rest a bit and think about it later. It's much easier to change the future than the past. In the future that we glimpsed, Kasane never returned to the present and stayed in the future. Right, Arashi? Yeah, that future disappeared when Kasane came back. However, Yuito's existence still holds the key to the future of this world. Even though that future is gone, the possibility of a similar future still remains. Obviously, I think we should do whatever we can to prevent that. <laughs> People always say you're lazy, Arashi, but it's great that you think hard work is so noble. How rude. I just hate wasting time and I spare no effort to avoid it. So there's no reason for you to rush to a decision. Got it? All right. It might be good to talk to Arashi. We all went into the future. I saw it with my own eyes, but I still can't believe it. So many ancient people dreamed of time travel. I guess humanity's wish has come true. But that was a future I didn't want to see.
This is nice. You seem pretty knowledgeable about time travel. Why is that? I was just curious, so I studied it. For example, it can be said that precognition is a power that deals with time. As long as that exists, it's very likely that time travel exists too. What an amazing power that would be. I mean, if I could control time, I could be as lazy as I wanted. You have a good eye. Kasane, are you getting enough rest? Don't worry about me. I know how to take care of myself. Okay, but you're looking unusually disheveled today. I just thought you were so tired with everything that happened that you didn't even notice. Disheveled? Like your hair clip. It's kind of dirty. Huh? You're right. I need a clean cloth and detergent. Should be in the kitchen. You don't need to be so frantic. At least you're not lacking energy. Okay, there. It's all clean now. Hmm. What? Nothing. I was just thinking about how carefully you're handling it. It was pretty unusual to see you lose your cool over a hair clip. This isn't just any hair clip. Naomi made it. We both have one. Oh yeah, she did wear something like that. She made them when I was younger to show that we were sisters. I can't believe I left it that dirty without noticing. Hmm. Are sentimental items really that important? Of course they are. Even though I'm sure it's just a hair clip to you. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I just thought it was a little curious, that's all. I don't have any sentimental item with my brother Fubuki. Nothing? You must at least have a picture. No. Not even a digital image saved. It just takes up room and is a pain to maintain. Even a digital copy ends up being a waste of storage space. I'm just not the sentimental type, that's all. Is that what a relationship between a sister and brother is like? It feels really distant. Everyone's different. Your relationship seems strange to me. Really? Yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to take a break. You should learn from me and make it a point to rest well. Learn from you? I'll have to think that one over. What's there to think about? Come and ask me any time, I'd be happy to teach you. I guess there's a part of me that assumed all siblings were close like me and Naomi. There does seem to be something off about Arashi and Major General Fubuki's relationship.
Kyoka, there's something I've been wondering ever since I joined the OSF. What is it? You seem very different during battles. I could be wrong, but it's almost like you're not the same person. Oh. I guess you never had a chance to watch me fight when you were a cadet. It seems like I completely change personalities when there's some sort of competition. A lot of people are like that. Are you talking about Kyoka's battle mode? It always surprises the rookies to see her suddenly go into beast mode. I'm not that scary, am I? Not scary. Just a little surprising. Want to know something interesting? She was always like that in the past. I know because Kyoka and I graduated the same year. Really? Yeah. You were famous among our class for being hard to approach. You started to change when you joined the OSF, getting friendlier every year. And now look how kind you've become. You only see the old traces of you during battle. I guess people change. Oh, look at the time. I've got an important nap to attend to. Later. That's so strange. Do you have any idea why you changed? What was it that caused you to act differently? Why I changed? I'm not sure. Maybe because the old me only saw herself. Hmm. But after making so many friends in the OSF, I formed more connections with the people around me. Then I started wanting to cherish each of my relationships. That could be why I started looking after everyone. The old you is someone I'd gladly trust to have my back. But I'm happy I met this version. <laughs> I'm happy to hear you say that. I hope I'll be able to stay this way. What's wrong? What? Uh, oh, nothing. Hmm? That was really interesting hearing old stories about you. Really? Just ask me if there's anything else you want to know. Oh! Do you want me to tell you about one of my favorite fortune-telling sites? No, that's okay. I'm not really interested in that. <laughs> you don't need to be so shy. We should go get our fortunes read together sometime. I really admire you, Kasane. You've only been in real combat for a short time, but you lead everyone so calmly. I think your leadership is what allows me to be so calm in a fight. Now you're just flattering me. I'm glad to help, though. If there's anything you want to ask me about, don't hesitate. You might hate my meddling, but I can't stop myself from worrying about you. I'm not a fan of it, honestly, but it's not that bad when it's you. You came. Sorry to call on you all of a sudden. I don't mind. First, let me apologize to you. Naomi was turned into an other because I wasn't strong enough to stop it from happening. I'm really sorry for the pain I've caused you. I don't blame you for that. Anyway, what did my sister give you? This. It's her handwriting. Why do you have a handwritten letter from my sister? She never told me you two were close. I don't think we were. We didn't fight together for too long, and we didn't exchange many words with each other either. However, Naomi didn't let that stop her from reaching out to me. Just read the letter. These are... 
recipes. I have a habit of taking on too much work, so I'd often eat very poorly. I thought I hid how tired I was pretty well. But one day, Naomi called me over and handed me this. She said she put together some simple and nutritious recipes so I could take better care of myself when I was busy. She could have just messaged me, but she went through the trouble of writing it out. Can you believe that? That's just like her. I was grateful, but it also made me think. How could I neglect my own health to the point where even a rookie was worried? I'm sure Naomi was busy herself, having just joined the OSF. She was always like that. She'd always prioritize others over herself. So did the recipes help? Yes. They were easy, tasty, and nutritious. These recipes helped me take better care of myself. I didn't have much experience cooking, but she listed all the steps I needed very carefully. As I read her notes while I cooked, I began to notice how caring each word felt. My sister was the best. But why are you giving this to me if it's helped you? It's something she made for you. Handwritten letters are quite precious in this day and age. I thought it would be better if her sister had it. I memorized the recipes already. Besides, nobody is more hurt about Naomi than you. The person who needs it the most should have it. All right, I'll hold on to it then. I feel better now that I've given it to you. What do you mean? Are you saying you couldn't wait to get rid of my sister's letter? No. I didn't mean it like that. It's just that I'm reminded of what happened to Naomi every time I look at it. I've been with the OSF for a long time. I thought I was used to losing friends. But I still can't accept what happened to her. Whenever I remember, it makes me painfully aware of my own powerlessness. I feel like someone's squeezing my heart. <sighs> If only I'd looked after the platoon better. There's a chance I could have prevented what happened to her. I'm sorry for unloading on you like this. I know that nobody is more hurt about her than you are. It's fine. It's not like anything you tell me will make it worse. I see. But as long as you continue fighting, you'll eventually encounter something you won't be able to carry on your own. As someone who's been in the OSF for many years, maybe I can help. Just reach out whenever you need me. I don't think anything like that will happen, but I will on the off chance it does. Well, if we're done here, I'm going back. All right. He seemed like he really blamed himself for Naomi. I hate to see him waste my sister's kind gesture.